It's time for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group with financial advisors Kevin Corhorn, Mike Bernard, and Josh Gregory. Welcome to another episode of Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group, where every week we're helping you take your next wise step in your financial life. My name's Mike Bernard. I am your host. I'm also one of the certified financial planners here at Corhorn Financial Group and at the Wise Money Show. Thanks for being with us. Here with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. You know, often when people think of financial planning, they think of retirement, don't they? It's often one of the most um, difficult goals for people to achieve. But in reality, it's just one of six key areas in your financial life. And we're going to break that one down. It's number five on our list. We'll share with you what are the most valuable planning concepts in this area of retirement planning here today on the Wise Money Show. That's right. That's right. Uh, Second half of the program, we're going to be hitting some questions. Now, I will tell you, thank you for sending in your questions. Continue to do so. Uh, We do have a little bit of a backlog, but we're going to be cranking through a couple today. And you can send us your questions a few different ways. First, you can call or text 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. You can submit your questions online at the webpage, wisemoneyradio.com. You can submit questions right there on the right. And then lastly, all over social media, we've got uh, Wise Money Radio set up, and you can submit questions that way as well. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, the YouTube channel. Um, you can feel free to submit your questions there as well. Thank you very much. All right, we are in week five of our series about the most valuable planning concepts. Now, we tell you all the time, just about every week, that your certified financial planner should be bringing you at least three things. One is confidence, two, clarity, and three is creativity. And that's what we're devoting this series to, is providing creativity in these certain areas, just sharing you some ideas that you might want to consider um, as uh, with you know the year's experience that we have. Today, we are in the fifth area of financial planning. That's retirement planning. The first we've already hit, which is present financial position. Second is protection planning. Third is tax planning. Not tax preparation, tax planning. Investment planning we hit last week. Today, we're tackling retirement planning. And part of retirement planning, that fifth area, we also include college planning. We'll be hitting that next week. I know a lot of you are thinking about college right now is your as the school year is winding down and then lastly the sixth area is estate planning before we get in and talk about our most valuable planning concept or the ideas uh in this area i think it's obvious but let's just what do we mean by retirement planning well retirement planning is really the process of of beginning by envisioning what you want your ideal future to be out there in the future after you have maybe walked away from uh, a, hopefully a great career, and you're going to be living without a paycheck someday, potentially, or maybe a reduced paycheck. What do you want life to look like? And when you have a vision or a picture of what that would be, then the hard work of, of figuring out the nuts and bolts, the um, you know what kind of calculations need to be done to figure what's it going to take to achieve that goal. Mm -hmm. and then charting a course to actually make that come to fruition. That's what we think of when we talk about financial planning in the area of retirement. And that is quite often difficult to do by yourself. It's kind of like the surgeon performing surgery on herself. And you'd say, no, she probably is going to have someone else do that surgery for her. And so when you think about retirement planning, I think of um, two different meetings that I had this week. And most people think when they hear us on the radio that we are professional radio people. No one thinks (laughs) that. We actually never been accused of that. We actually are not professional radio people. We are guys that um, love financial planning and love serving people, and we get to serve people in our area. And and we we have a dream of changing the world and living in one of the most financially literate communities in the world. So that's why we're doing the radio show is to get people stirred up and thinking about these things. But I had a meeting and it was scheduled for an hour and a half. We sat down and we started talking as a husband and wife. And the wife has a very successful business. It's not surprising, but the, the, the level of success has been a very pleasant surprise. And so we were talking about, okay, if you've got 10 years left in the home stretch, what do you want to do? And about 45 minutes into it, 
as we're as we're having this conversation, it comes out that what she wants to do is not own a business. Hmm. And she wants someone else to own the business, and she'd be happy working for that person, but only doing what she is genius level at, which is how the business got to where it is in the first place. But she didn't, she couldn't identify that, and she couldn't have told you that 45 minutes before we started the appointment. I was going to say, that That's actually is, is a pretty common thought by a lot of entrepreneurs. However, um, rarely can they get to the point where they admit it. You start you start a business because of your skill, because of your passion, and then you're consumed with running the business, which I can tell you it can be challenging. <laughs> <laughs> right, because for any business, there are at least two businesses. One is the business, so if I'm a widget maker, the business of making widgets. But if I'm any good at making widgets, there is automatically a second business created, which is the business of running the business. Yeah. Well, so bringing it back to that point, I think what you're suggesting is what I was going to tack on to Josh's comment here, and is that actually retirement planning starts with that vision and starts with that initial plan, but then the real value is updating it and changing it. Yeah. Because one of the things I, I love to say to clients when we're first going through the process is I just tell them, all right, so here's the here's the output, and we walk through it, and I say, now this is wrong, and they always <laughs> chuckle because the, the investment of time and so on has been... Um, has been a lot to get to that point and then to tell them you can almost throw this out the window because life's going to change, but we're going to keep up with those changes. And, and as life does change, we'll talk about those trade-offs so you'll have instant clarity and confidence of what you need to do to be on track. Well, not only is life going to change, but your view of the world is going to change as well because what we didn't hear in your story, Kevin, was how long had you been working with those clients? I mean, it, it may not have been apparent to her in day one of the planning process that, you know, I, actually, I love the work that we do within the business. I just don't want to be the business owner anymore. And that's a that's a clarification point on what her retirement outlook is going to be. Yeah. I, one of my clients wrecked me when she, I, I was asking her what her vision for retirement was. And she said, I want to have a house with a palm tree. And ever since then, I've thought, man, I, I want a palm. I want more palm trees in my life too. <laughs> and so I've been trying to persuade my wife Andrea that we need someday, somehow, we need to spend a little bit of time in warmer weather, especially in like January and February. I'll get you one of those inflatable ones put out in the backyard. <laughs> no, I might I, have to settle for that. Actually, I think if anyone could do it, Josh probably could grow a palm tree in <laughs> in, in, in 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 his in, at his farm. All right. Well, so so that. Gosh, and we could, I feel like we could talk about these different stories, I mean, for the entire hour. Um, but no, you're, you're right. The, 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 the formal science of creating a retirement plan, the easiest way to think about it sometimes is in an analogy of, of a roadmap. Where are you? Where do you want to go? What, what are the miles between here and there? What, what are the mile markers so that you can see you're on pace or you're off pace? And it, a, a retirement plan is kind of like a, a game plan for a prize fight. You know, it's, it's all great until you step in the ring and the first punch is thrown. So I, Yeah, I, I agree. I had a, uh, one of the participants in the retirement class that I was teaching just recently. Uh, he, he asked me at one of the breaks, hey, how often do you think you need to update some of these assumptions you've built into your, into your retirement That's plan? Because I had just gotten done teaching him how you build a retirement plan. And I told him at least annually because, you know, every year that goes by, again, the goal is going to become more and more in focus. Life around you is going to change. You you set out on a certain roadmap and there have been detours along the way, whether you chose them or not. And so you have to amend the plan. As as you were Mm -hmm. saying, Mike, the moment you've written the plan, it's wrong. And it's time to start rewriting the plan. Yeah, Josh gave a plug in there. I'll give you a little more detail. We we are passionate about retirement planning. We're passionate about financial planning. You 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 can tell, I'm sure. But um, Josh and the team here at KFG, we teach a class. Oh, every five, four to five months, yeah. maybe, um, at a couple of universities in town. But not for 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 college age students, but for um, 
aspiring retirees in the community and <laughs> teaching well you about said. all of the different facets that go into a successful retirement. And we're going to dive into some of those strategies today. So um, so hopefully you can attend that class at some point in the future to get a little more get a little more info. But we are really just scratching the surface here. We, we are going to get into our favorite planning strategies in the area of retirement planning. That and more coming up here on Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Oh, she was saving that one. Thank you yeah. for saving it. It, 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 it is. Uh, <clears throat> it's hard. I mean, there are so many stories. I know mm-hmm. that this could be story hour. Mm-hmm. And and I'm. You said two, and then you you. I didn't get to the to, second you one. You were only able to get in one, and, and only half of it. Yeah, I took it from you. That's okay, Budinsky. We're uh, <laughs> we're totally <laughs> we're totally fine. Um, no, I. I it, I, pr- I probably wasn't supposed to do those stories. It's all good. Uh, at that, t- but it the, it begs, it begs for stories. Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we need to tell more more stories. I was reflecting on that last week. I wasn't planning on talking about Lauren, and I I actually that just came to me, and it, I shared it in two different shows, and I feel like we need to share more stories. Okay, like so that. so do we start the next segment with? A story, and then structure, nope. or do we start with structure, structure and then, then a it story? can go wherever it wants. So, which one do you want to do? Which structure? We're still hitting that second question, right? Yeah. The what's not, the most valuable financial planning? Yeah, concept? we're not still hitting it. We're going to start hitting it. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. why do we? Why do you feel it's the most valuable? Nope. No. What do you think? What? It, what do you think? What it is? Mm-hmm. What it was? What it shall All be? Right, let's go. Oh, okay. In Niles. Oh, uh-huh. all right. In Niles. Do you have confidence and clarity and creativity applied to your retirement plan? Do you have a goal? Do you know where you stand right now? Do you know the mile markers you need to hit along the way? And then as life changes, do you have a process of continually updating that in an objective way to know you're on track? That's uh, one of the things that we do at KFG. That's what we're talking about today as well. This is Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being with us. My name is Mike Bernard. Here with me in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Thank you to the attorneys at Ledoux, Kern, and Keene, as well as First State Bank for making the Wise Money Show possible. Thank you very much. Boy, that uh, we, we, we've started talking about the most valuable planning concept, and we've just enjoyed sharing some of the um, enjoyable experiences we've had serving people just like you. And, and talking about stories. We're going to get into some of our favorite concepts here in just a second. If you have any questions, though, reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you and hit it on an upcoming program. Call or text 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. Wisemoneyradio.com is how you find us online. Submit a question right there. And then social media, Facebook, YouTube, Twitter. You can submit questions and catch other content there as well. All right. Retirement planning. There's lots that goes into it. There's lots of variables. It's very complicated. Most likely, it is the biggest goal that you're going to try to achieve in your financial life. It's going to take the longest time to to prepare, and hopefully, you get one shot, and and you're going to do it right. So, So, Josh, what would you say? Of all the different strategies and issues that go into retirement planning, what do you say maybe jumps out to you as the most valuable? You know what? I... I was feeling nostalgic recently, and I was I was thinking about the good old days when, at the beginning of our careers, uh, we would run retirement projections, doing the calculations to figure out how much will people need for retirement. We did it all in Excel spreadsheets. While we were walking to work uphill, uphill in right. the snow, <laughs> both ways. Yeah. Ke- Kevin started his career using an abacus to do this, though. <laughs> Um, so he, he's seen multiple well, iterations. Actually, of yeah, it, actually, it was Lotus One, Two, Three. Yeah. So going from Lotus to Excel that was, was a huge revolutionary, change. wasn't oh. it? Well, the the problem with using a spreadsheet, you, you can build some pretty sophisticated analysis and everything, but the the number one issue is anytime you're trying to forecast what your investments might grow to or what might, they might need to grow to. An Excel spreadsheet typically is just going to assume a steady rate of return every single year. No fluctuations, no unpredictability. But that's not how the investment world behaves. 
Not even close, right? right? And so there are new tools out there, far more sophisticated, that are using some more cutting-edge uh, concepts from the field of mathematics, something called a Monte Carlo simulation. And it basically helps you forecast a wide range of outcomes that could occur within your investment portfolio for retirement. And the reason why this is so important is because you don't want to believe or, or, or be fooled into believing that your investments are just going to generate some sta steady rate of return and there's uh, no risk of things not working out for you. The reality is there is risk. And part of our job, I'm, I'm realizing uh, here later in my career, that part of our role as financial planners, a good CFP is someone who can help you become more comfortable with uncertainty understanding the uncertainty in your financial life because there is no plan that is a sure thing. You just have to be able to live within that uncertainty and make the adjustments necessary to, to keep yourself comfortable with the level of risk that you're taking. I, I, so I, I love that concept. That one wasn't even on my radar because I'm sort of taking it for granted that we now are using more sophisticated tools thanks to technology. I would caution with one risk, though that it seems like with this new technology and with the internet being, you know, it's all, everything's, uh, you know, everything's on there. Um, people mistake a great plan for just Monte Carlo now. Yeah. Where we used to do a lot of great planning and what was lacking was a variable risk and rate of return. And now it almost seems like the pendulum has swung completely. You can jump online right now and you can plug some, forgive me, garbage into some website and it will run a Monte Carlo analysis and look very professional and give you some outcome that actually is totally mm -hmm. garbage as well. Yep. Um, so just, just be careful. The process that we use here at, at KFG, and we have talked about it on plenty of shows in the past, we'll talk about it on plenty of shows in the future, but it's a very, it's a very formal uh, process and it's very thorough talking about various um, variables in your financial life and well, what if this, what if this, what if this, and what, and we reveal the outcomes and draw conclusions off of that. Yeah, many listeners are listening to this concept of Monte Carlo simulation, and they're drawn back like I am to the 1977 gray Monte Carlo <laughs> with the burgundy interior and the moonroof and uh, the disproportionate front end. Uh, so it was seven eighths front end, one eighth uh, <laughs> back end uh, car, and um, so w w you think about that. But I, here's the here's the deal: when you look at simulation and what are the possible outcomes, it is to m in my humble opinion, it's somewhat helpful, but really, it's it's not helpful at all to me. When I think of it, 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 in the game, what I'm trying to do is to constantly improve my fallback position. Mm. So when you look at the range of, of possibilities, on, on one end of the spectrum, it is just amazing, and that assumes everything goes right. It is a health issue, um, and, we, and we just, we see this from dealing with it, 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 you know, day in and day out. There's a an unexpected health issue. Hey, I had something. I can't drive for six months, and my job uh, depends on me driving. Well, what if? Right. And so you want to have these what if scenarios prepared, and the and you want to get to uh, acceptance where the what if scenarios you could move quickly into them. Mm -hmm. And I personally, as I'm getting older. I'm saying, no, I, I want my life structured so that I can very quickly and easily toggle from the this is what's happening now and now I'm in the what if and there isn't a, a massive disruption to my entire life and everyone who counts on me to their entire life. Yeah, so, you know, maybe you could plug in to that and say the most valuable planning concept is starting early because you don't have as much margin to adapt when when you're forced to um you don't have as much margin in your financial life to say okay yep i'm ready for this adjustment if you haven't been starting early and doing that planning from the very beginning that's exactly right because you need to learn the skill and the habit of recognizing what are those trade-offs in your plan 
what what are the fallback positions that Kevin was mentioning? And we always talk about how there are five decision points that you or choices you get to make that influence whether or not you're going to be on pace, uh, you know, to be ready for retirement. And one of one of those decisions is just simply what age are you going to retire at? Yep. And you might start with the game plan that I'm going to retire at 65. But what if you actually need to go to 66 or 67 for the numbers to work? I encourage people all the time, if you're planning for 65, be willing to go to 67, but be ready for 62. Wow. Okay? And here's why. The, the research has shown, the statistics have shown that many times people end up needing to retire earlier than they had actually anticipated. And it's often a health reason that kind of forces them out of the workforce, either their own health or a family member's health. And if, if you were really counting on those last two years of working to kind of finalize your, your readiness plan, and all of a sudden those two years get yanked away, um, that, that can be a major problem. And all of a sudden you're having to make sacrifices and changes within your lifestyle that you really aren't ready to make. I mean, again, all of that suggests, uh, you, gosh, you had me optimistic when you said most people retire a couple of years sooner. Um, that sounded great. I was thinking palm trees, but then you said <laughs> the health reasons. And yeah, but, but all the more reason to be planning on an ongoing basis. And uh, like Josh said, updating that at, at, least, once, at least once a year. Um, I've got a, you, you would expect this. I've got a very nerdy um, answer to what I would say the most valuable planning concept is. Not that I disagree with what we've talked about so far. You need a plan. It needs to be updated, and you need to have great fallback clarity and, and uh, margin so that you can fall back. Um, so we've got that and most common mistakes. As I'm listening to this, I'm thinking of, oh, I remember someone that fell into that trap or that trap. We're going to hit that too to help you avoid those. That and more coming up here on Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Good. All right. Yeah, that is. And you're good. good at nailing ten minutes, like on the money. It just takes. Uh, remember I'm how impressed. nervous? Ne- remember how nervous I used to be and how terrible He's I was pro. at it? Yeah. Now it it's gotten easier. But you take the mic back over, sometimes with thirty seconds to go, sometimes with twenty, and you just adjust. Oh, yeah. You are a stinking pro. No, he is. is. All I could think. Lucky. It's hard, it, you know. As I tell my children, if you can think, it doesn't mean you should say it. But I was thinking 1977, the 1977 Monte Carlo. And then, you know what came into my mind? You guys were, were not even a gleam no. yeah. in 1977. Nope. And then I started thinking, <laughs> when you were in diapers and wetting the sheets, I was at the Ponderosa, wrapping to the beat. <laughs> All, right. Ha, ha, All ha, right. Ha, 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 ha. Okay, here we go. What is your plan for drawing Social Security, and and how does that impact your retirement confidence? We're going to hit that in just a second. This is Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Thanks for being with us. My name is Mike Bernard. Here with me, as always, in the KFG studios, Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Thank you to Bethel College Adult and Graduate Studies, as well as Diane Bennett and her Inspired Homes team of realtors for making the Wise Money Show possible. Thank you very much. Gosh, we're talking a lot about retirement planning. I'm hoping to sneak another question or a question or two in. If you have them, please send them our way. Uh, You can do so by calling or texting 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. Rick has had a great question about retirement coming up. Uh, Hopefully we're able to hit that today. He sent that via email. You can do that by going to wisemoneyradio.com, and there's a section to put a question right there on the right. And then uh, all over social media as well, you can submit questions. Facebook, we get several. Um, you could put post them on the YouTube channel as well or Twitter. Just search Wise Money Radio on any one of those mediums. So, All right. I, as I've just thought about this, uh, gosh, I, I think your answers were better uh, about the planning and variables, Monte Carlo and so on. But the first thing that came to mind when I was thinking of, you know, what, what, are, the, what are the big eye openers? What are the big game changers when it comes to retirement planning? And there's this, there's this sweet spot of situations where someone has prepared well for retirement, mm-hmm. and um, they're not. It's kind of like Goldilocks, as Kevin always says. They're 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 not looking to retire way too early and and really put you know 
their financial plan in stress mode where they kind of are shooting the moon. But it's not too late either. And, and essentially, they can retire and don't need to draw Social Security immediately. They can live off of other assets and sort of um, slaughter the calf, if you will. Um, sorry for those of you that love uh, animals there. But basically take a chunk of dollars and just say, yep, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to spend through all of this over the next three years. And so this couple hundred thousand is going to be gone. But what that allows me to do is delay Social Security, which then provides um, this sort of optimization. Sometimes... If, we're, if, if the strategy really aligns, you can also take that time before drawing Social Security, if you're drawing dollars out that are after tax or in, in, in individual account or trust account, you then open up the opportunity to convert a lot of dollars to from, IR, from pre-tax to Roth that, ma that helps you manage your required minimum distribution and so on. And so it's that strategy. It's not, it's not something that you see often, but that one... Um, I've just enjoyed and I've seen a lot of, and that one can really make a huge difference in your retirement plan. Absolutely. I mean, the, the folks who have a vision and a plan to allow them to not draw Social Security at their earliest possible date, but instead to delay as long as possible, they, I don't know, they, they just seem to have a better retirement yeah. And and maybe that is just an obvious statement. I mean, they, they were more planful. And I, I remember reading uh, a, a research report that said those who plan for retirement end up with literally twice as much in assets as those who don't. Wow. And, you know, we, we often ask the question, well, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? You know, do I have to have money to do financial planning or do I do financial planning so I'll have money? And the research would say, you do planning so that you will have the right resources. And that's what creates those types of opportunities you were just describing, where you can uh, maybe pot potentially put off Social Security, let it keep on growing and maturing, increasing to its maximum possible size, and that just increases your steady streams of income to be able to plan off of in retirement. Yeah, so if you're 63 and you're listening to this, prolonging when, when you start drawing social benefits, it may not sound like a good strategy to you. No, I was just going to say that. So yeah. so what you really want to do, if you can, if it's possible, start. if you're listening today and you're saying, okay, I'm interested in retirement planning, but I just want a practical step or two, I'll, I'll give you a practical step. Log into Social Security. Um, we did that with a client this week because the husband... Uh, has worked and been the primary provider. The wife has worked it, at at home and taken care of that side of life. And so she and she's a little bit older. So the question is, could she draw and get anything at 62? And how would it change for the husband? And they didn't have a social security benefit statement for her. So I said, well, hey, let's let's go in. Have you ever set it up? No, we never, we've never set it up. I said, well, let's go in and set it up. It takes five minutes. We'll just crank it out right here. We went to go in and set it up, and lo and behold, they had set it up. So, <laughs> so then you go through the process. Okay, we, we could get the username. They'll give you that. <laughs> they won't give you easily the, um, the password. And so we went through the guess the password program until you get kicked out, and they say, hey, we're going to send you a letter. And, and I'm fine with that security, but I would say, Make sure you understand Social Security and how it works and start to think about, does it make sense for me to delay that? Because if you're 63, I can tell you what the 63-year-olds, most of them think. I don't want to delay it. Yeah. I, yeah. I want to take it now. What if I'm dead before 85, which is when I'd be better off? And so you're not – none of these strategies will be applicable to you if you haven't been thinking about them. So understand Social Security. And then the other thing I would want you to understand is Medicare. And so there's a lot of buzz about this idea of Medicare for all. And you can – just go study Medicare. Understand at 65, you've done health insurance a certain way your entire life. And then at 65, it's going to be completely different. And what does that completely different mean? And what is it going to cost? And what is it going to cost based on your income and other things? And so these are a couple of things. If you said, hey, I want to get equipped and prepared for retirement and retirement planning, and I want to show up 
to talk to a certified financial planner with with some understanding, understand those two concepts, that would be a great start. Yeah. And I've got a, I've got a third one when I get a chance. <laughs> uh, a couple honorable mention uh, planning concepts as well. People that have delayed Social Security, Josh, you said, um, they just have a, have, seem to have a better life, a better, uh, richer retirement. I'd say people that have pensions are just in a very unique situation as well. And pensions are going by the wayside. So you need to create your own pension. We, we do that for you at Corhorn Financial Group, your personal pension plan. So that, I would say, would be second. And, and that kind of ties into um, having a very clear retirement income strategy. I'm going to use that to launch us into what do you guys see as the biggest mistakes that people make? If we were just talking about the most valuable planning concept to help you uh, have some creativity and get some new ideas, let's talk about the mistakes that you should avoid. It seems if if we were just going to take our client's word um, at, at face value, those who come in, their number one regret is just coming in later than they really should have. Mm. Waiting too long to get started. Um, it, it's not, eventually there will come a day where you have waited too long and you just can't play catch up. That's possible, right? Um, but hopefully if you have been planning, you've been sacrificing along the way, you've been building up resources, maybe you don't have a real clear plan, but you at least have the, the right building materials to work with. Those who never uh, get focused early enough on the fact that someday you're going to walk away from a paycheck, you're going to draw your last paycheck, and you need to have plan B in place. Um, you know, you, you wait too long on that, and you lose the power of time working for you, especially in the area of investment. When does someone need to create their first retirement plan? What age? 25. I was going to say 21. Wow. Uh, 20. You're, you're <laughs> I say, <laughs> can I get 19? This, this isn't the price <laughs> of okay, I would do it when I'm <laughs> 18, <laughs> uh, now that you mentioned it, Josh. So early uh, is what you're saying. I yeah. Yeah. You know, I, I'm remembering last summer when we got to go speak to the Notre Dame football players, and one of the challenges that we gave them was let your very first paycheck be the first time that you are contributing to your retirement plans. Don't wait 10 years in or, you know, wait until life's just a little bit more stable. Get started early, and mm -hmm. part of that includes, well, just figuring out what it's going to take for retirement to be achievable so you know that you're saving the right amount, not just the early amount. Yeah, at, at that young age, it's just really about building the right habits, the habits that will allow you to um, be on track for these financial goals as they get clearer. When you're young, you don't really, it's fuzzy. You don't really, you don't really know, but if you have the right habits... And starting building a retirement plan when you're that age can help reveal, hey, these are the habits you need to have in your financial life. There's several other mistakes that we just want to point out, not to be doom and gloom or, or um, negative Nelly here, but we, we want to help point out these mistakes so that you can avoid them. So we've got that and listener questions coming up here on Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Okay. I, very quick bonus content. I, that, that is earlier than what I usually say. If you can get the habits without going through the plan, I, the habits are more important. But by, by 40, I've always said you need to have a, a retirement plan built because – but at, at 21, at, you know, most people – at 21, I'll tell you what my answer was. I want to retire by 50. Right. Because you think, well, every generation in America gets a little bit better – and if my parents retired at, 50, at 60, I'll retire at 50. And, but that, and money doesn't work that way. Financially, things don't work that way. And so going through five factors with someone who really doesn't have much life experience, it's, um, it's, so I, I, but, but whatever, it need, whatever it takes to get the habits. So I think in lieu of a retirement plan, um, you could just have a cough drop. Um, no, seriously, in lieu of a retirement plan, showing someone if you spend, you have $100, what will this $100 be worth at age 65, and what will it be worth if you buy a stereo? <laughs> People don't buy stereos anymore. Yeah. A Bluetooth speaker? What's that? <laughs> An echo? What's a stereo? Uh, a boom uh, box? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a walkman. <laughs> a walkman. <laughs> Someday. All right. Someday I'm going to be hip. Segment hey, four. Do I get to say mine? Yeah. You, you'll you say yours. we got to get to Rick's question. My big fat Greek 
retirement mistake? Sure. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for being with us today. This is Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. My name is Mark Bernard, laughing and having some fun in the KFT studios with Kevin Corhorn and Josh Gregory. Thanks so much for joining us. Listen, if you have any questions, we're going to hit a great question from Rick here in just a moment. If you have any questions, reach out to us. You can call or text 574-222-2000. That's 574-222-2000. Rick sent us uh, his question via email. You can do so, wisemoneyradio.com, just section right there on the right where you can submit your question, and then all over social media. And this is where I'd remind you that if you've missed anything today or uh, want to catch up on previous episodes, you can do so on social media. The, every episode is on the YouTube channel. Just search Wise Money Radio, subscribe to it, watch every episode right there, and you can figure out what we were just laughing about in the in the studio. Um, every episode is also on podcasts. You can, wherever you listen to podcasts, just search Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. That's Corhorn with a K. And then lastly, on the website, if you're submitting a question right there, on the left, you can catch up on every previous episode. The entire library is right there. All right, we've been talking about the, the fifth area of your financial life, retirement planning. Next week, we're going to be talking about college planning, which is timely because of um, you know school just about uh, ending and so on. But we're into the mistakes section to help you avoid making some of these mistakes. Kevin, I know you had one top of mind here. So, yeah, Josh said not early enough and it'd be easy to say if you're 35 you're feeling like not early enough and as we encourage people here don't play the compare game right because it would be easy if you want your joy to be stolen talk to someone who says man i'm just killing it i'm either making tons of money or my investments are making tons of money and you know look at i got this really cool camaro and all this stuff <laughs> and and so it will, steal, it will steal your joy. Do not play the compare game. So, but the biggest mistake. That could be a big mistake when it comes to retirement. All my friends are retiring, so I should as well. Or all my friends are going on these cruises, so I should go as well. I mean, that, that's a huge mistake. It is a huge mistake. But the, e I mean, the easiest thing to do it, it, to me, what's real in my life right now is my son, Joshua, who's in South Korea, and he is comparing his life to the life of the guys around him. And, and he's living on a portion of what he makes and saving most of it. And he's looking at the guys that spend most of what they make on alcohol and other various uh, vices. And it, it is befuddling to him. And he's, and he's scratching his head. But I'm going to... Um, so don't compare yourself. You, you are not living their life. You will not ever be held accountable for what they do. Live your life. Design your life. Figure out what life you want to to live. And if I was going to give you some encouragement, I would say if you haven't uh, started the planning process, start today. Mm -hmm. So it because it's because Josh said, well, you know, if you get to a certain point, planning might not be very helpful. And I'm just gonna and I'm not I'm not overriding what Joshua said. You you certainly limit your options. Yeah, but that's I, what I was implying. But I've never seen the situation where us sitting down and being creative didn't open up better options than what people understood they had at the moment. Mm, and, sure. and, and they could have been retired for 10 years. Hey, I'm retired for 10 years and I'm not paying any taxes. Hey, that's cool. Guess who's going to pay taxes on all this money here? So... There, so I would, to me, the biggest mistake people make is not getting professional help. So we're big advocates of ha getting professional advice and getting a plan because a plan lets you deal with reality. A, a leader's job is to define reality. Mm -hmm. And if the reality is, as I was sitting down with some folks yesterday that were 61, hey, you guys are going to need to work to 70. Now, if you would have told them at 50 they had to work till 70, they would have screamed. But th at 61, with what they've done so far, hey, y you've got to. And that, wasn't, that, that was not in any way judgmental. That wasn't demeaning. That wasn't condescending. That was just, hey, the reality is, with what you've done so far, in order to get to where you want to go, you're going to have to live, uh, you're going to have to work until 70. And um, living till 70 would help as well. Um, but here, the interesting thing is, 
if I could say don't make this mistake, don't get too attached to things. Mm. Because there are some things in their life, some material things that they're very attached to. And if they could detach themselves from these things, their their plan gets easy. Well, and isn't that the benefit of financial planning? Being able to recognize, boy, if I'm willing to make this sacrifice, I can take hold of something even better. And so ho hopefully going through that process with you, they may be able to at least see it as an option. Right, right but, here, but this is the crazy thing. And this is why this is the, the biggest mistake people make in, in our society is they don't spend contemplative time thinking about their situation. Because when you think yeah. about it, you think, well, I'm going to give up this thing. I'm going, this thing, what is this thing? This thing is a, a cabin up north or a cabin down south in the mountains. Or it is a, um, a, a very expensive horse or a fill in the blank. Because the question is, and they've never thought about it in the terms of, no, I'm going to keep working like a dog in order to pay for my horse to be boarded and pay a thousand bucks a month for this horse. And you say, well, if that's what you want to do, that that's fantastic. But when, when people can sit down and, and look at a contrast, sometimes they make a different decision. Mm -hmm. And our, our job is because we work for our clients, our job is not to tell our clients what to do. Our job is to say, Hey, here it is. These are the trade-offs. What, what, which would you prefer? Right. And if they say, Hey, I prefer the current path. That's fine, and you and you can lay it out. Hey, here's an easy way. Here's a hard way. Wh which way do you want? Yeah, that that feeds uh, quickly right into to mine, and it's not it's not very fun to talk about. But I we have a lot of people who have uh, addressed this retirement goal, saying, um, yeah, if I if you're telling me in order to retire at this age, I'm gonna I need to spend that. Yeah, I spend that. Yeah, that's fine, and mm -hmm. really don't have a great grasp on what lifestyle is really going to be like in retirement. You've never been there. So I'm not saying that uh, it should that should be easy. No, no, no. But ba basically who minimize the impact of their spending in retirement and then lining up the right income strategy for that spending. That's just it's just a very dangerous thing and a lot of your spending habits will likely change in in retirement. So Having a planner, having a professional who's done this a thousand times walk you through that to help you fully assess the entire situation and plan appropriately is just invaluable there. So, so. quick apology to Rick because we may not get to his question. Because this week I met with some folks who are 50, and they're big baseball people, and they want to retire at 60. And I said, and, and I, I love analogies. It's, I think in analogies, and it's... It, it helps sometimes to understand how the world works. So I said, here's the great news. I said, you've got, you've got 10 spring trainings before the game starts. So you've got 10 chances to try this on and get it right before the real game starts. Because at 60, if, if you're going to do this at 60, this is the real deal. This is no longer a dress rehearsal. It's real life. And we need to get you prepared to live on what you say you can live on. So you're going to have 10 chances. But they said, but, spring training, though, is boring. No one even likes to watch it. Yeah, that's the point, though. That's what it takes to get ready for the game. Go ahead, Josh. Well, I was just going to say that that just emphasizes the need to get going on your planning now. Because you need time to test out your plans. Yes. That's test what your spring, theory. Spring training analogy. I love it. We've often use the dress rehearsal idea, but if you think that uh, your plan will only work if you live on 60 grand a year, well, let's start living on 60 grand a year for several years before you even get to retirement so that you go into retirement very confident and in the habit of living on 60 grand. You know you can do it that way. I could not agree more. I, I, even though we didn't get to Rick's question or other questions, I hope you found this conversation helpful. I mean, this is, for most people, this is the biggest goal. 
we're going to talk uh, upcoming. We've, we've talked about this in the past that what if you're not aiming at a traditional retirement? Does that make you bad? Does that mean financial planning isn't right for you? No, you just need to figure out your variables are different. Your inputs are different, but all the more makes that planning process extremely important. So we encourage you like we do every time. Take your next wise step in your financial life. Hopefully this helped you do so. On behalf of Kevin Corhorn, Josh Gregory, and myself, and all of us at Corhorn Financial Group, have a great weekend. We'll see you next Saturday for Wise Money with Corhorn Financial Group. Securities offered through Silver Oak Securities, member FINRA slash SIPC. Advisory services offered through KFG Wealth Management, LLC. Doing business as Corhorn Financial Group. KFG Wealth Management, LLC, and Silver Oak Securities Incorporated companies are unaffiliated.